Boketov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And guys, this morning, uh, we as we get up here in Eastern Europe, we're already finding out that uh, the U.S. warships are repor reportedly converging in the Mediterranean as tensions shoot up, according to Sputnik News there. Uh, we have really decided to sit down, come back once again before an attack is actually launched on Syria by U.S., U.K., and the French government. These three nations have agreed to launch strikes. From what we're understanding thus far, within the next 24 hours, they will launch an attack on Syria uh, as it is considered to be a retaliatory attack for the alleged chemical weapons. What's interesting, though, is that Russian investigators have gone to the scene and they're reporting that there is no evidence of chlorine gas actually have been used in this particular area. In fact, they've been and interviewed the uh, doctors there as well, and they're coming back saying there's been no chlorine gas attack in uh, this part of uh, uh, the outskirts of Damascus. And it kind of makes you wonder what's going on. Of course, Russia right now has pretty much done the same thing that the U.S. did when they would not allow in Khan Shikun, uh, any others to come in to investigate. But China is calling for an open investigation. I'm sure Russia would agree to this as well, an open investigation about this chlorine gas attack. And of course, only the White Helmets and one other group are, are the ones that are actually reporting about this gas attack. Uh, terrorist groups, very known for their links, etc. But we came across a very unusual video, and I'm actually subscribed there to, uh, uh, to uh, Mr. Uh, Tucker here, uh, Tucker Carlson, on Fox News, on his Twitter page there. But I picked it up from the, uh, the Columbia uh, Bugle, who had actually tweeted this particular... Uh, actually, am I on the right one, or are we on a different one already? So... Uh, at any rate, let me just see if this is the one. Yeah, I think that, yeah, this is, this, this is it. And uh, I want to play this monologue with you guys uh, from Tucker, what he is saying about the Syrian war, because he is mainstream media, Fox News. Uh, Tucker is very candid when he has his guest on. He doesn't pull punches. Uh, and his response about the alleged chemical attack in Syria being uh, done by the Assad government should make Americans uh, take a step back and think differently about what's going on because he challenges this idea. And uh, quite frankly, it's the first mainstream media I've seen in the United States that is really taking uh, a very objective look it is what in what has happened uh, in Syria, and not just what is happening now, because we see comments uh, where people are saying, oh, okay, you say they didn't do this one, but what about last year and the year before? Well, we're going to go back into that once again in this broadcast here. Uh, hopefully, we'll keep you guys on live stream as long as possible. You're the only one seeing this live today. This will air on YouTube as well. Uh, but we decided to record this uh, professionally so that we can get a better quality product out there. Uh, and again, we're going to be looking at a couple of different uh, videos here, so it'll be a little bit lengthy there, but I really wanted you to hear at least about five minutes of uh, uh, Tucker Carlson's uh, report on this with Fox News there. Listen to what he has to say here. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Leaders on both sides of the aisle in Congress, in the media, in our intelligence services, in virtually every overfunded think tank in Washington, have suddenly aligned tonight on a single point of agreement. America must go to war in Syria immediately. Bashar al-Assad cannot continue to lead that country. He must be overthrown. Assad is an evil man, they tell us. His latest crime is a chlorine gas attack carried out over the weekend by his forces against a rebel-held suburb of Damascus. Assad's poison gas suffocated children. Pictures of the aftermath of that are all over the internet and they are horrifying. Assad is a monster. Let me, before we go much further into this, let me just go ahead and, uh, Put this notification up on YouTube. I'll, I'll put a notification at the beginning of the video. There are going to be some disturbing images on here, I do believe, as we go into this. So I just want to make sure that you're aware of that, especially if you have children watching. 
Uh, we may stumble across some of these images. I, I don't remember if, if Tucker had had those in his report here, but just so that you're aware of that. And one other thing I'd like to point out as well, what's interesting is there is some speculation that these people may have been gassed inside an enclosed area there. Reminds me very much of the Holocaust uh, in Germany when they would gas uh, the Jews inside of the uh, buildings there. Uh, very, very disturbing. So that's just something that keeps coming to my mind as I watch the images that we're seeing here, especially so many of them in a confined space here. Um, so listen, listen to what Tucker says, and I won't interrupt him again. That's the official story. Almost everyone in power claims to believe it. The push to war in Syria, by the way, has united politicians from both sides. Lindsey Graham and Howard Dean typically agree on very little. Not much at all. But today they are both calling for war in Syria. Graham is demanding massive attacks on the Syrian military. Dean is going even further than that. On Twitter, he called the president, quote, a wimp for merely sending thousands of troops and launching tons of bombs at Syria. That's not enough for Howard Dean, who, as you may remember, once ran for president as the peace candidate. Tonight, he wants total war in Syria. Television pundits, of course, strongly agree. This morning, the foreign policy team over on MSNBC explained that it's far more important for American troops to fight in Syria than it is to secure our own border here in America. Watch. There's no question that now, uh, all these years later, it is Donald Trump's, Donald Trump's challenge. He has to take action. He's spoken to Macron. What he ought to do is a coordinated action. There has to be a comprehensive response. As Trump leaves to fight his imaginary border war, He's leaving the real war where we can make a difference and said he's turning it over to Assad and to Iran and to ISIS. This is something that Barack Obama oh, wouldn't even do if, if confronted with these set of facts. Trump has to take action in Syria, everyone nods sagely. That ought to make you nervous. Universal bipartisan agreement on anything is usually the first sign that something deeply unwise is about to happen, if only because there is nobody left to ask skeptical questions. And we should be skeptical of this, starting with the poison gas attack itself. All the geniuses tell us that Assad killed those children. But do they really know that? Of course they don't really know that. They're making it up. They have no real idea what happened. Actually, both sides in the Syrian civil war possess chemical weapons. How would it benefit Assad using chlorine gas last weekend? Well, it wouldn't. Assad's forces have been winning the war in Syria. The administration just announced its plans to pull American troops out of Syria, having vanquished ISIS. That's good news for Assad. And about the only thing he could do to reverse it and to hurt himself would be to use poison gas against children. Well, he did it anyway, they tell us. He's that evil. Please. Keep in mind, this is the same story they told us last April. Do you remember that? It was almost exactly a year ago. The new administration announced it was no longer seeking to depose Assad from power. Regime change was no longer a policy. So the usual war chorus in Washington started yelping, went berserk, and days later, Assad supposedly used sarin gas against civilians in Syria. There was video. We bombed the Syrian airbase in response to that. At the time, this show asked what seemed like the obvious question, are we really sure that Assad did that? It seems weirdly timed and counterproductive to him. Shut up, they explained. Of course we're sure. What an unpatriotic question. But of course they were lying. Two months ago, the Secretary of Defense admitted that actually, we still have no proof that Assad used sarin gas last year. The story, it turns out, was propaganda. It was designed to manipulate Americans, just like so much of what they say. We've seen this movie before, and we know how it ends. But just for the sake of argument, let's assume they're not lying this time. Let's assume Assad did just use chlorine gas against kids. He's perfectly capable of that, by the way, not defending his moral character. Let's say he did do it. Would that be worth starting a new war over? Overthrowing Assad's regime in Syria would result in chaos. Many thousands would die. In fact, we might likely see the genocide of one of the last remaining Christian communities in the Middle East, and we ought to care about that. Some of the dead, of course, would be American servicemen. A new war would cost us tens of billions of dollars, maybe hundreds of billions. Would it make America safer? Would it make the region more stable? Let's see. How exactly did regime change work in Iraq and Libya? Duh. We can kind of stop right there. But the point you can see is that uh, Tucker Carlson is really bringing 
uh, to me, one of the most objective looks at this war here. Now, something that, uh, that Tucker brings out that I think is very much worth noting that uh, most people are not paying attention to is the fact that he shows you how that President Trump in his verbiage just before these gas attacks is pro, pro Syria in a way or pro let's exit type of situation. In other words, last year, the president was saying that, well, he's not for regime change. Suddenly he changed his mind about President Assad. And then the chemical weapons attack takes place. Oh, wow, makes the president look like he's more objective. And this is what I was bringing out when I discussed the issue about now. President Trump was saying for about a week or two, we're going to pull out of Syria. You know, let them take care of the problem there. Regardless of how much you may appreciate President Trump as your president or still stand behind him, uh, I can't help but think it is a play on the American public. It's actually uh, <laughs> a, a bit uh, of a slap in the face, if you ask me. It insults our own intelligence to think that we should fall for something so dubious as what the president has pulled this time here, seeing that it is in a perfect pattern of what has happened before. Just as, as Tucker brought out last year, he says, we're not for regime change. We want President Bashar al-Assad to stay in power. Then bam, here comes the chemical attack, sarin gas. Debunk though, on a much higher level than even what Tucker Carlson is bringing out. We're gonna share this again with you because some people keep saying, oh, what about last year? Or what about the year before? You're making your case on this particular incident, but what about these others? All right, well, let's move a little further down the road then. This is Aaron Erdem, and this is regarding the 2013 so-called sarin gas attack that, if you remember, Nikki Haley at the United Nations stated emphatically that there was no contest to, uh, you know, their proof about Assad using chemical weapons on his own people. Well, I'm going to play again an excerpt of uh, Mr. Aaron Erdem. He is a parliament member of the Turkish government. Uh, I don't know if he is still a parliament member. I'll turn down the volume because it is in Arabic. We'll just read the subtitles together as he speaks here. I'll pause it for the sake of uh, making sure we can read it. Uh, he is actually already speaking at the parliament. The prosecutor made arrest under that investigation. This is the investigation where ISIS militants were captured in Turkey. They were actually carrying sarin gas as well as the, the, the equipment to launch an, an attack with that sarin gas. It was a cover-up. And he does accuse the prime minister of that time, which back in 2013 was President Erdogan. He was the prime minister of Turkey at that time. Well, let's listen to see exactly what Mr. Aaron Erdem says again. So the individuals who were suspected to have carried out the transportation were arrested and put in prison. The prosecutor ordered the telephones of those suspects to be wiretapped, which is also stating the indictment. Mr. Minister of Justice Buzdag is also well aware of the details of this indictment because himself went on air and made statements. But do you know what happened? On one week's time, that case was closed. The suspects were released and were allowed to leave Turkey by crossing over the Syrian border. Now I ask you, is this what you understand as justice? To set free people transporting sarin gas? I am asking. One journalist states, that this much worse than all I have said before. Now he's gonna show you all the papers that were writing about what happened, and then you wonder why Erdogan had this staged coup, why he arrested all these journalists in the country? It's to silence them. Remember the rat line that was created to smuggle this in, and the CIA in the United States was very complicit in doing that, according to Seymour Hersh. Do you know who says that the Republic of Turkey 
has dispatched ammunition to Al-Qaeda terrorist organization by orders of prime minister serving at that time? Let me tell you, Governor Adnan Hussein of Nikos, here the records made by the governor are here, and if any of you would like to have them, you can have a photocopy of them. The governor states that he instructed the trucks to go there under the prime minister's orders. Do you know what uh, Irfan Fidan, the prosecutor who arrested the journalist Ken Kandabar said? He said that Kandabar has not falsely defamed the government or the prime minister. He said that Kandabar merely disclosed a state secret, in other words, a fact. And he goes on to actually state in here that the blood of the children of Syria, and I'll see if I can find that for you, are on the hands of the Turkish government because they allowed ISIS to transport sarin gas through that country. At the same time this was going on, Seymour Hersh uncovered uh, through action American journalists who ended up mysteriously dying in Turkey was murdered uncovered that plot to move that sarin gas, the CIA involved. By the way, how many of you are aware that are listening uh, that the CIA, the Mossad, worked very close for the Vatican? I hate to say that, Israeli intelligence. You don't believe that that's not true? And, and listen, because I know many of you guys, you're really excited when you hear about someone that's Israeli intelligence. Well, the Mossad works very close with the Vatican just like the CIA does. I know this for a fact. Because at one point, we had two very close friends of Israeli News Live that were both Mossad agents. And when we began to really uncover the, the, the in-depth crimes of the Vatican against Israel, one of those agents went ballistic against us. And they began to spread a campaign of lies like you wouldn't believe. It's died down since then. It's been several years ago that that actually took place. And I was very dumbfounded. But when a good friend of mine that does a lot of research on the Vatican as well shared with me that the Mossad and the CIA both work very close with the Vatican, then I began to understand what is going on. There's where your deep state lies at. It doesn't mean that every Mossad agent is a bad agent in Israel. I don't mean to imply that. But look at all the crimes that are being brought out that they say that even the Mossad has had a part in, including 9-11 attack. Now, I don't say that Israel was involved in that, but the point is, is there's a lot of accusations going around. All right, so let's continue on. Let's move into some other directions on this here. This is the video we did back on uh, February 25th, 2018, what the State Department once spotlighted in Syria. And I actually play a clip here of the lady at the State Department where she says to your editors, talking to your producers, say to the, this is important, that is something. Let me just play just a little clip of this for you here where you can hear once again, this is where we had reported this issue here, and the State Department was calling for a spotlight not only in East Gouda, but as well of the White Helmets. Listen to this. This is important. This is something we've got to cover. Now is the time to cover it. So many people have come to us saying, what is the United States doing about the situation in East Gouda? What can we do? The answer to that is we can shine a spotlight on that. That is what I'm attempting to do right now. That is what the government is attempting to do. And I hope you will be a part of that. Shine the spotlight on that. Uh, I want to thank Elise last night. Uh, she had included me uh, in seeing a documentary. I'm not supposed to encourage people to go see things or do some things, but I don't care. I'm going to break that rule because I think it's just that important. A documentary last night called The Last Man, The Last Man in Aleppo. Why it was about the situation in Aleppo, Syria. So the point is, is the State Department was asking for a spotlight to be put on East Gouda, and we did exactly that. We put a spotlight on it as well, because we knew that if the State Department is promoting the White Helmets, 
knowing that this group here has had links to the terrorist groups that are fighting against uh, the government in Syria, uh, then that's a major issue. And it also is a major red flag for us because we realize that if they're putting a spotlight on East Ghouta, they know there's going to be a chemical weapons attack in the near future. Now, the only thing is, though, is they need it to kind of die down that they tell the journalists this before the attack. Otherwise, it'd be just a bit too obvious. All right, so also, in this video here, sarin gas attack in Syria, this was one of our spotlights that we were doing. And I'm going to share with you in the, in the uh, links below on YouTube, that is, uh, this particular video so you can go back and watch it. It is an in-depth detail of what we're discussing right now. All right, but in closing, two more things I'd like to share with you. This article right here, this is from Pentagon trained serious Al-Qaeda rebels in the use of chemical weapons confirmed by CNN. Uh, this is on globalresearch.org. Um, and this is an American news source here. Uh, it says the article was first published in April 2017 following the accusations directed against the Syrian government of the using of chemical weapons against its own people. In a bitter irony, CNN confirms in 2012 report that Al-Qaeda affiliate rebels were trained by the Pentagon in the use of chemical weapons. Now, I, I bring you back though to this particular image here, and I'll share, this will be in that video when you look it up, just go into the description of this video here, you'll find the links to this article here, Moderate Terrorists in Syria, who supplied terrorists with chemical weapons. And I share with you right here, dissemination by explosives here. This is at a U.S. military base, U.S. Army uh, Dugway, uh, Dugway Proving Ground. Um, I don't know if I'm reading this right because it's hard to see. It's kind of a little bit blurred on here. Office of the Technical Direct West Durat Test Center. And, and, and I guess that's Dagway or Dogway. I'm not sure if exactly in Utah, and they were developing these launching mechanisms for the use of launching chemical weapons, as big as a 55 gallon drum uh, that they could actually use. Well, the odd thing is, is the very terrorist in Syria used the exact same instruments to launch these chemical weapons, all right? So that's why I bring that up, especially when they say the Pentagon was training them, Al-Qaeda, in the use of chemical weapons. The last terrorists held ba bastions of East Ghouta to East Damascus city center. Duma has been devastated by chemical weapons attack that has killed at least 70 people. The majority of the victims were women and children. Isn't it always interesting uh, where these guys are at? By the way, it mentions here, and this is the two groups I was talking about. However, characteristically and typically, the mainstream media have immediately blamed the Syrian military for the dreadful attack even before investigations can occur. Their sources, the White Helmets and Jayash uh, al-Islam, which by the way, happens to be the group that refused to surrender to Turkey. And Turkey wasn't even going to imprison them like they did with all the other terrorists that surrender. They just moved them to another part of Syria where they can continue their war against the government. You know, if you ever, you know, we talk about America being a Christian nation and holding up Christian values. But, you know, we have long since fallen away from that true Christian value. But that is a Christian value when you can see a government, a government that is at war with terrorists in their nation. They don't even take them as prisoners of war. They transport them safely, them and their families, away from the area. They just want the war to end. It's very troubling indeed. In closing here, this is about Khan Sheikhoun. And what this article is here, this is the Trump's red line from Politica Usland, uh, the Welt, I believe this is either a German or Austrian uh, magazine, uh, online news source. President Donald Trump imported intelligence reports when he decided to attack, excuse me, ignored important intelligence reports when he decided to attack Syria after he saw pictures of dying children. Seymour M. Hirsch investigated the case and alleged a sarin gas attack. And of course, Seymour Hirsch clearly uncovered an amazing plot that was being done.
And again, President Trump totally ignoring the facts. The available intelligence made clear that the Syrians had targeted a jihadist meeting site on April the 4th using Russian-supplied guided bomb equipped with conventional explosive. Details of the attack, including the information of its so-called high-value targets, had been provided by the Russian days in advance to American and allied military officials in Doha whose mission is to coordinate all U.S. allied Syrian and Russian Air Force operations in the region. And then you wonder why Israeli intelligence is able to tell you of the details. Well, of course they are. Because they knew about it days in advance. But it wasn't that they were going to use chemical weapons. In fact, the bomb that was being used would have not left a little dent or a pothole in the road. It would have left a crater. Some American military intelligence officials were especially distressed by President's determination to ignore the evidence. None of this makes any sense, one officer told colleagues upon learning of the decision to bomb. We know, he says, that there was no chemical attack. The Russians are furious, claiming we have the real intel and know the truth. I guess it didn't matter whether we elected Clinton or Trump, he states. Within hours of April 4th bombing, the world's media was saturated with photographs and videos of Khan Shikun, pictures of dead and dying victims allegedly suffering from symptoms of nerve gas, nerve gas poisoning were uploaded to social media by local, by local activists, including the White Helmets, a first responder group known for its close association with the Syrian opposition. This is Seymour Hersh you see pictured here. But as it turns out, it was never the case. But the U.S. deep state fell right for it. And unfortunately, I know many are saying that President Trump's hand is being forced by the deep state. But in my opinion, it's being forced way too easily. And the firing of his cabinet members, members and bringing in those members that are obviously for a war in the Middle East makes it even more suspect. If you don't believe me, maybe take a little bit of time to listen to Tucker Carlson mainstream media, if this is what most people prefer. Because after all, it seems like we're not the only ones. Even Alex Jones has done a in-depth broadcast about the use of chemical weapons being a fabrication. The very man that stands with President Trump and has stood with him unbelievably so throughout all the things that have happened in his administration. And even he says, it was a false flag attack. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I hope something will help somebody. You know, they say, call your congressmen, write your senators. You don't have time for writing. Phone calling might be the best thing we could do. Because we're about to go to war once again with a country, Syria, who's been falsely accused. If they were not falsely accused, if this was really true that the Syrian government was using the chemical weapons, if there was not an overwhelming amount of evidence that's to the contrary, I would be right there with you. I would support the fact that Assad needs to go. I would realize that there is a cost that would have to be paid in order to make sure that the Syrian people are safe. But when we have an overwhelming amount of evidence, as I've shared with you before, I think even in this one video about the gas attacks, if we kind of search through the video, maybe I can find this on here, where they actually kidnap the, the citizens of Syria there. And not only do they kidnap those citizens there, but they use them as human shields. And these are the people that are dying. Do you think the White Helmets are who is supportive of the terrorists to begin with, really give a flip about Syrian citizens? No, they don't. They don't care at all. If they did, why then are they amongst these terrorists that have kidnapped? If they're truly a civil defense team, why then don't they come to the aid of these civilians that are being held prisoner by terrorists? Which, by the way, just so you can see them, there they are there. And this was another one that really got me because even doctors brought out the fact that barehanded white helmets, these two up here as well, and this one over here, he's the only one with a glove on and they're touching supposedly sarin gas victims, they would all be dead. One drop is lethal. 
And so we follow this, and, and sadly enough, this is not the video we're bringing out, and, and as well, I just bring it out as well just for a last minute moment here. Let's maybe, let's listen, just in closing, this is where, um, we get the comments from Dr. Henry Lowendorf, peace activist and an American. Let me share that with you in closing here. Syria. I think what Alfred said is so true. We are fighting a mass of propaganda that has demonized the Syrian government, demonized its leaders, a an effort that precedes every other intervention that the United States has made over the course of many, many decades in order to convince people that it's okay for quote-unquote humanitarian reasons to overthrow a government and to replace it with whatever. Very troubling indeed, friends. And listen, if you guys appreciate the work that we're doing. We do need your help. And I can't understate that. There's not many people willing to tell you the truth. And it doesn't regard, it doesn't matter who it is. I know I, I got a comment the other day. Someone made the comment, you care about the Syrian lives, but you don't care about the Palestinian lives that are dying in Gaza. I do care about Palestinian lives as well. I care about all lives. And I know there's a lot of injustice, but I also know in the Palestinian area, both in Gaza and in the West Bank, if Palestinians could only recognize too how that there is a major influence to cause them to riot, to cause more harm to the Palestinians. And I do realize there's a lot of crimes being committed on both sides, including on Israel's side, against humanity. When will we ever take, as a Christian people, I'm a believer in Yeshua. I'm born, I was born a Jew from both my parents were Jews. But when will we ever learn as believers in Yeshua to hold up those values? To hold up the values. You know, Yeshua was not against the Arabic people. In fact, the Syrians believed his words. And I know that many of them were also the house of Israel descendants of, but he also it was the Gentiles that actually ended up believing him even more so. When are we ever going to hold to those values? When are we going to truly hold to it and not be a part of warmongering and killing more innocent people? They may differ with us in beliefs, but when do we stand for what is truth? If you want to support this type of ministry, this type of news broadcast, please do so. We will give you more details about Patreon as soon as we can, as soon as we can get that up. That will be one platform I will not hold back on. And those videos that are go, will go there will not be here because I need to be able to bring out some points that I can't say on YouTube because the fact of the censorship and, the, and their willingness to shut us down. Visit our website, israelinewslive.org. You can support the work there. You can do it right on YouTube, right above the subscribe link. Also on live stream, there is a donate, donation button right there as well. Uh, if you have any trouble with any of these areas, please let us know. Let us know in the comments there. We'd like to see what you have to say. Shalom.